tip, I'm going to be talking about something that probably you do every single time you interpret, but you don't really give it much thought. That is fingerspelling. Now, the reason I'm talking about fingerspelling is when you do it properly, it really helps your interpreting a lot. And one of the things that I'm mainly going to be talking about is the speed of your fingerspelling. Now, I know when you first learn how to fingerspell, you start out really slow and really basic, and that is what you should be doing. I personally remember when I was learning to fingerspell, I thought it was so cool to learn how to fingerspell as fast as you can, but I remember that no one could understand me. I could fingerspell really lightning speed, and it was accurate, but no one could understand me because it was too fast. Now maybe when you've been interpreting and you're watching other deaf people or watching other interpreters, you've noticed they fingerspell really fast and you can't catch it. And then it's really frustrating. And you have to think as a deaf consumer, it's the same thing. They're trying to get words from you. Maybe it's vocabulary in school or it's the name of a medicine or anything like that. If you're fingerspelling it too fast, they're not going to know what you're talking about. They're going to have to ask you to repeat and it just belabors the process. So. The first thing that you need to do when fingerspelling is spell slowly. Now I know sometimes the information is coming pretty fast, but you can always ask the other person to pause so that you can fingerspell it slowly and clearly. That is key. Slowly and clearly. No matter how expert you are at interpreting, fingerspelling slowly is the way to go. The second thing is, when you're fingerspelling, don't bounce your spelling. Okay, for example, if I was going to fingerspell insulin, because that's something that you would want to fingerspell out, you would sign it I-N-S-U-L-I-N, nice and slowly and very clearly. Now what some people do is they bounce their words, so they go I-N-S-U-L-I-N. Now you can see there's a lot of movement in that and sometimes that can be very distracting to the consumers and if they have like bad eyes like maybe ushers, that's very hard for them to understand. So try your best and if you have to, what I do when I finger spell is I take my other hand and actually put it right here on my wrist to kind of hold it into place. I-N-S-U-L-I-N. Try and keep it in a small, compact area. Don't move it out a lot. Obviously, if you're doing a double letter, you'll move it. But again, don't be bouncing your letters. The last tip that I have for you is use fingerspelling appropriately. Now, sometimes you're going to use it to, like I said, say a medicine name or say a proper name, something like that. But also use it to clarify. Um, sometimes when, especially if you're working in educational settings, there might be one sign that can mean many different things. So in that context, you're going to want to finger spell out the word even though it might be obvious to you, it might not be obvious to somebody else. So make sure you're using your finger spelling properly. Alright guys, I hope you have enjoyed today's tip on a very basic but important part of interpreting, finger spelling. If you guys have any tips or tricks concerning fingerspelling while interpreting, please leave those in the comments below. Also, if you've enjoyed today's video, hit that like button, and if you're not already, subscribe. As always, I will have my two other channels up here, my main beauty channel and my vlog channel, so if you're interested, check those out. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, everybody!